Good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good, yeah. good evening. Right. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. So, you already six yet? Okay, so six po, six lang yung participants natin inside this room. Or we're just waiting for the others. Okay, thank you, Sir Rocky. Okay, so let's uh, proceed. Okay, so by the way, good evening everyone. Good evening to our uh, class participants here in Zoom and also to our uh, subscribers and viewers who tuned us in FB Live. Hello, good evening everyone. So good morning and good afternoon. I know that you are uh, from uh, all over part of this world. So by the way, uh, today we will uh, review the uh, major in uh, TLE or the Technology and Livelihood Education. So it's been a month since uh, the first uh, the first meeting that we had, and uh, today is the uh, second one. So I hope that every one of you uh, can learn and uh, gain knowledge for today. So before we start, uh, everybody, I invite invite you to uh, 
let's uh, start a prayer. So everybody, please, uh, let's bow our head and feel the presence of our Lord. Lovingly, Father, we come to this hour asking for your blessing and help as we gather together. We pray for your guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be best that we can be. And we ask this in the Lord of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ayan, so again, good evening, everyone. So I hope that all of you are fine and safe. So uh, today, uh, we will have a two hours uh, discussion, uh, question and answer, and then the rationalization. So uh, let me begin with this quotation. Okay, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, a hard work, and learning from failure. So I know all of you are uh, work hard and uh, all of you uh, prepare a lot for this uh, upcoming left examination. So uh, although it is postponed for how many time, but uh, now we have a... Uh, schedule so i think it is a batch by batch schedule so at least no meron na tayong uh, congruent con congruent schedule kung kailan tayo uh, mag exam so i think this review is for the september batch tama ba am i right yes po ma'am okay and then uh the rest is on Kailan na yung next natin? December ba? Or January na? Next year na? So, anyway, uh, I hope all of you uh, uh, are excited to take the exam. So, it is a very long preparation. So, uh, and I hope that all of you uh, will find a good result. And hopefully, everyone will pass the exam. So, dapat ngayon pa lang ay i-claim na natin, i-declare na natin that all of you will pass the licensure examination and all of you will get your license. All right? So, let's just be positive amidst of the uh, uh, current situation and pandemic that we are facing right now. So, again, uh, good luck to everyone. And of course, uh, uh, I would like to invite uh, also everybody and also uh, our viewers from FB Live. You can also uh, enroll. Uh, enrollment for the review for uh, September batches is still open. So uh, especially in our major, so technology and livelihood education. So if you have uh, any concern or uh, question about the class schedule and enrollment, you can uh, message directly to the page of Teacher E. All right, so the coverage of your exam in TLE uh, are the basic drafting, business math, basic electricity, basic plumbing, cosmetology, foods, carpentry, and masonry, basic electronics, and uh, entrepreneurship. So last time, I think it's uh, last March, so we already discussed uh, the 25 question, first 25 question, I think. And now we will continue our discussion. Okay, for a while. Okay, so I think our last topic is about the uh, different types of electric conduit. So now we will proceed to our uh, question number 26 for our continuation. So uh, again, uh, especially those who are uh, here in our Zoom room, 
So I want you to participate so you can uh, type your answer on our chat box and then uh, listen to my uh, explanation about the uh, rationalization and answer. Okay, so I would like to remind uh, everyone, so I want you to apply the uh, the Okay, so i-apply natin yung ating pinag-aralan last time. So yung uh, pag-eliminate, elimination of uh, choices, kung ano yung uh, best choices na pwede nating uh, piliin. Okay, so let begin with the uh, question number 26. So para marami tayong uh, mga question na pa-discuss. Okay, so are you ready everybody? Okay, so let's proceed. Question number 26. Let's begin. It is a law that states the current is the directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance and is known as A, PEC, B, law of resistivity, C, Heerhoff law, and D, Ohm's law. Again, I will repeat the question. It is a law that states that the current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. And it is known as A, PEC, B, law of resistivity, C, Kirchhoff law, D, Ohm's law. So what is the answer? Okay, so most of you answered letter D. Okay, letter D, which is Ohm's law. Okay, the correct answer is letter D, Ohm's law. Okay, Ohm's law, it is defined as a relationship between the voltage, current, and resistance. And when we say PEC, so of course it is eliminated to the uh, uh, option. So it is uh, stands for perfect electronic conductor. Oh, so it is an, an idealized material. So it is only a material that used uh, for the conductivity equivalently and zero uh, resistivity. And when we say law of resistivity, it is the resistance of substance that is directly proportional to the length of the substance. And when we say Kirchhoff law or Kirchhoff, the pronunciation, it was the first described by a German uh, Physicist uh, Gustav Christoph. So it is uh, the how the current and the voltage work within the circuit. Then for our question 27, in Ohm's law, to define the unknown voltage in the circuit, the formula to be used is A, E is equal to I times R, B, E is equal to I divided by R. C, I is equal to E divided by R. And D, R is equal to E divided by I. Again, in Ohm's law, to find the unknown voltage in the circuit, the formula to be used is, what is the answer? It's letter A, B, C, or D. What is the answer? Okay, so from our FB Live, from uh, Rowena de Guzman, it's letter A. Okay, so the correct answer for number 27 is letter A. It is E equals to I times R. Okay, so uh, everybody, please... Uh,
Okay, so for you to be able to uh, know the formula in Ohm's law, so first you have to know the symbol, the unit of measurement, and of course the abbreviation. So for letter E, E is stands for the voltage or V, V or E. And for letter I, it stands for the current or uh, current of the amps or amperes. So it must be I or letter A. And for R, it stands for resistance or the ohms. Okay? So para mas mabilis ninyong uh, maintindihan or for you to be able to uh, easily understand and to know the formula, we have the uh, what we call Ohm's law magic triangle. Okay, so uh, everybody see, everybody please uh, see this uh, image, image. Okay, so that is the Ohm's law magic triangle. So if you want to find the voltage, ayan, so imagine this and always remember this uh, Ohm's law magic triangle. Okay, so on the top, we have the V or voltage. And then... And the left, lower left side is the I or the current in ampere. And then on the right side is the R or it stands for resistance or ohms. Okay, so this, that is uh, very simple. So if you find the voltage, you just eliminate the V. And then you can find this V is equal to I times R. And then kapag hinahanap naman natin ang current, so it is stands or the formula is current is equal to B or voltage divided by R. And then if we find the resistance, it's R equals to voltage divided by I. All right. Okay, so that's why in number 27, to find the unknown voltage in the circuit, the formula to be used is letter A. E is equal to I times R. So for our next question, for number 28, so the resistance of 230 voltage incandescent lamp in 300 ohms what is the required to operate the lamp? A, 0.85, B, 0.77, C, 1.30, D, 7.74. Again, uh, the resistance of 350 voltage incandescent lamp is 300 ohms. So what is the required to operate the lamp? What is the correct answer? It is A, B, C, or D. Okay, someone is answered A. The other is answered B. How about uh, the others? It's A, B, C, or D. Okay, so for our number 28, the correct answer is letter B. It's 0.77 ampere or A. 0.77 A. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, so the formula is the uh, I is equal to V divided by R. So I is equal to 330 voltage. So divided by uh, 300 ohms. So it, it, it's equal to 0 0.7666 or uh, we have to... Uh, Round off, ma'am. Yes, yes. Sorry, no, wala ako. Okay, so you have to uh, round up. So from 0 0.76, 7666, so we have the 0 
A. Okay, for the next question. A toaster takes 10 amperes from 120 volt line. So the power is A, 12 watts, B, 100, 130 watts, C, 1,200 watts, and D, 120 watts. Again, a toaster takes 10 A from, two, from a 120 volt line. So the power used is, what is the answer? It's A, B, C, or D. Okay, so everybody from this room uh, answered letter C. So the correct answer is letter C. So now let's find the power formula. So ang hinahanap natin ngayon naman ay power. Okay, so uh, like what I said a while ago, you already know the uh, Ohm's law. So since alam nyo na yon, mas madali nyo nang uh, ma-identify ngayon yung paghahanap ng formula in terms of power. So again, kagaya nung ginawa natin kanina sa Ohm's Law, uh, the most important things to do is to know the symbol, kung ano yung mga signs and symbol na nagre-represent sa kanila. So P is stands for power in watt, and then E is for voltage in volts. And then I, same, same kanina, is current in the amperes. And then R is the resistance. So now, uh, the power formula, you can, use, you can use the power formula in three ways. So it depends upon kung ano yung uh, problem natin. So ano yung uh, hinahanap sa problem. So uh, if you will find the power, so P is equal to I times I. Or P is equal to I to the power of 2 times R. Or P is equal to E to the power of 2 times R. So, depende po kung ano hinahanap natin. Then, uh, kung current naman, current is equal to power divided by voltage. And then, if you will find the voltage, so it is equal to power divided by I or current in amperes. Okay, that's why the uh, answer in number 29 is 1,200 watts. Or P is equal to E times I. So P is stand for 120 voltage. So times, ah, sorry, E is equal to 120 voltage times 10 amperes. So it equals to 1,200 watts. Walls. Okay, next. For our number 30 question. How many kilowatts in the water heater if it draws a current of 10 amperes and has a resistance of 23 ohms? Again, how many kilowatts in the water heater if it draws a current of 10 amperes and has a resistance of 23 ohms? Okay, the choice is letter A, it's 23 kilowatts. B, 2,300 kilowatts. C, 230 kilowatts. And D, 2.3 kilowatts. So what is the correct answer? Someone is still typing the answer.
Okay, so from our FB Live viewer, so Sir Joel Alolor answered letter D. And also from our uh, Zoom room, they also answered letter D. So the correct answer is letter D. It's 2.3 kilowatts. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, so letter D, 2.3 kilowatts. So P is stands for I to the power of 2 times R. So equals to 10. Of course, it times natin multiply by itself. 10 times 10 times 23. So equals uh, 100 times 23. So equals to 2,300. So Para makuha natin yung 2.3, we have to convert it in kilowatts. So, uh, to convert it, we have to divide it in 1,000. So, 2,300 divided by 1,000 is equal to 2.3 kilowatts. So, the correct answer in number uh, 30. And how many kilowatts in water heater? If it, if it draws a current of 10 amperes and has a resistance of 23 ohms. So the correct answer is letter D, 2.3 kilowatts. Okay, next for our uh, question number 31. It refers to any loadful activity undertaken on a continuing basis involving manufacturing, purchasing, selling, marketing, and financing in order to obtain profit. Again, it is refers to any lawful activity undertaken on a continuing basis involving manufacturing, purchasing, selling, marketing, and financing in order to obtain profit. A. Cooperative. B. Business. C. Management. D. Entrepreneurship. Okay, ang bibilis ng mga nasa Zoom, Zoom participants. Okay, so all of you answered letter D, which is the entrepreneurship. Okay, so now let's uh, uh, find the uh, meaning of the other choices. So bakit uh, entrepreneurship? So unahin muna natin yung ibang choices. So when we see cooperative, it is a private business organization that is owned and controlled by the people who use uh, to use it as a products, supplies, and services. And when we say business, it is something that will make you money but might not have any uniqueness. So, ayun uh, yun lang yung pagkakaiba. And then, uh, when we say management, it is the coordination and administration of tasks and achieve, to achieve the goal. So now, the answer is entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship, so it comes from the French verb meaning uh, to undertake. And uh, dito maraming uh, namimiss uh, interpret or interchangeably um, namimiss yung uh, correct meaning ng entrepreneurship. So when we say entrepreneur, it pertains to the person. And the entrepreneurship, it is the process and enterprise is the outcome. So, entrepreneurship is the capacity and willingness to develop, to organize, and to manage a business venture along with uh, along of its uh, any risk uh, to make a profit. Ayan. So, kailangan willing kayong mag-take the risk. Okay. So, for our uh, question number 32. It is the acceptance of challenges and changes with open arms. It's an open uh, is one of the qualities of entrepreneur, which is a risk taker, b self confident, c task oriented, d future oriented. Parang kakabsabi ko lang ito kanina, no? So again, for the question number thirty two. Acceptance of challenges and changes with open arms is one of the qualities of entrepreneur, which is A, risk taker, 
be self-confident, uh, C, task-oriented, D, future-oriented. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer is letter A. So like what I've said a while, a while ago, so in order to make a profit, you have to take the risk. So it has the ability to anticipate the risk and the future moves. So if they, have, uh, if they are beneficial uh, to the enterprises, so you have to take the risk as an entrepreneur. Okay, um, for a while, yeah. So for question number 33, the key ingredients to entrepreneurship is to place on A, discoveries made, V, innovation, C, products sold, D, service offered. Again, for question number 33, the key ingredients to entrepreneurship is placed on A, discoveries made, B, innovation, C, products sold, D, service, services offered. Okay, so what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer in question number 33 is letter B, which is the innovation. Okay, so in business and entrepreneurship, it is important that uh, you are highly competitive in the world that we live in. So innovative ideas are uh, what will separate you from the rest. So in order to create uh, an outstanding product or strong brand, uh, and of, uh, if you want to build your customer network, so you need to be inno uh, innovative. So uh, some uh, exciting ideas and concept. So that is the uh, copy, uh, that is the uh, capability that will lead you to the marketplace. Then next. So for our uh, question number 34, so which considered to be the best way to assess entrepreneurial projects or business ventures? A, price, B, product, C, packaging, D, promotion. Again, which considered to be the best way to assess entrepreneurial projects or business ventures? A, price, B, product, C, packaging, and D, promotion. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer in number 34 is of course letter B, it's the product. So in marketing, we have four P, so product, uh, price, place, and also the promotion. So product is one of the most important aspect. So without product, we cannot implement anyone or uh, other elements for the marketing mix. So a great products are easy to market as they serve both uh, the need and wants of our customer or clients. Next, next question is number 35. Okay, so from our societal viewpoint, which of the following statements about marketing objective is not true? Again, from our societal viewpoint, which of the following statements about marketing product is not true? A, assist in the efficient allocation of resources. B, create a wealth and promote economic growth. C, Improve income distribution among different sectors of the economy. D. Maintain instability of supply, supply and demand, and market goods. Okay. 
So what is the answer in letter uh, in number 35? Okay, so the correct answer in number 35 is letter D. Okay, so everybody in a uh, Zoom room got the correct answer. And some of our FB Live viewers also uh, answer letter D. Okay, so again, focus on the question. So the question is from the societal viewpoint, which of the following statement about marketing objective is not? Is not? True. So, ito yung tinutukoy niya. Not true. So, you need to be aware uh, for this question. So, the correct answer is letter D, which is maintain instability of supply supply and demand for market goods. So, why letter D? Because the word instability. Okay, when we say instability, it is the lack of stability or lack of being unstable. Okay, so sometimes uh, the question is uh, easy and also the uh, choices. So sometimes uh, they trick you from a uh, question and the choices. So you have to be careful and you have to understand and read it carefully. Okay, so for number 36. So what document contains the overview of the step by step procedure of the whole business? A, rationale of the project, B, project proposal, C, details of the project, and D, description of the project. Again, for uh, question number 36, it's number 36, sorry. So, what document contains uh, the overview of the step-by-step -step procedure of the whole business? A, rationale of the project, B, project proposal, C, details of the project, and D, description of the project. Let's find the other. Okay, so the correct answer in number 36 is letter B, which is the project proposal. So when we say project proposal, it describes the project and its purpose and also the outcome. Uh, of course, the steps that will be taken to complete the project. So it serves as a key management tool for the implementation of projects. It will also uh, help you to make an uh, important decision and of course, uh, to define the goals and objectives that uh, need to monitor in the business uh, performance. So while the other choices are uh, rationality of the project, so it is the statement of the facts explaining the background of the uh, project. And then uh, description of the project is the it's the idea and context to explain the goals and objectives to be reached uh, the business need in problem and to be addressed. So the potential pitfalls and also the challenges, approaches, and execution methods and resources. All right, for our... Uh, next uh, question. So... Which of the following graph is useful in making percentage comparison? Which of the following graph is useful in making percentage comparison? A, uh, bar, gra bar graph, B, line graph, C, pie graph, D, uh, volume graph. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so some of, uh, some of you in Facebook Live answered letter A and also letter B.
So the correct answer is letter C, pie gram. Okay, so let's see. So this is the example of pie graph. So uh, the pie graph has a pie charts that are generally used percentage or uh, proportional data. And usually the percentage is presented by each category that is provided next to the corresponding slice of the pie. That is the pie chart. And uh, the other choices is the bar graph. So uh, this is the example of uh, bar graph. We use this to represent categorical data with rectangular bars and heights. And, and then when we say line graph, uh, we use lines to connect individual data points uh, that display uh, quantitative values over the specified, uh, specified time interval. And then uh, volume graph, it is a graphic that shows the earnings or losses of a company in relation to the volume of sales. So that is the difference uh, of bar graph, line graph, pie graph, and the volume graph. Okay, next question. So in journalizing, the owner's withdrawal form, his firm, should be written on the A, expenses, B, debit, C, capital, D, credit. Again, uh, in journalizing, the owner's withdrawal form, the, the owner's withdrawal from his firm should be written on the a, expenses, B, debit, C, capital, D, credit. Okay, so what is the correct answer? It's debit Okay, so the correct answer is letter B, debit. Okay, so debit is a uh, expense or amount of money that is paid from the account. For, for example, a cash account, purchase account, expenses account, uh, and also the drawing account. So now uh, for you to have a short uh, review, so what is journalizing? Okay, so when we say journalizing, it is the act of uh, recording bookkeeping entries. So in your choices, uh, we have the expense. So expense is the cost of the operation that a company incurs to generate revenue. And then uh, in choices, we also have the capital, which is a, a term for financial assets, uh, such as funds, uh, held in the deposit accounts and also the funds that obtain from special uh, financing resources. And then credit, we use it for a uh, entry that uh, depicts a decreases in assets or an increase in liability. And now uh, the correct answer in the question is letter B, which is the debit. So it is uh, the entry in the left-hand column of an account to record a uh, Deb. So again, let's back to question number 36. In journalizing the owner's withdrawal form, uh, the owner's withdrawal form his firm. So it should be written on the letter B, debit. Okay. So the next question is, what is the term that best describes the total of cash, purchases, uh, 
customer's obligation to the business. Again, what is the term that best describes the total of cash purchases plus the custom customer's obligation to the business? A, assets. B, profit. C, liability. D, inventory. So some of you answer A, some of you answer D. And someone is answered letter C, liability. So what is the correct answer? The best term uh, that describe the total of cash purchases and uh, customer's obligation to the business. Okay, so the correct answer is uh, letter A, which is the assets so when we say asset so a, those are the items of your company uh, company owns that can provide a future economic benefit so for example like cash uh, investment inventory office equipment even your uh, machinery and uh, e, uh, even the company owned vehicle so that is the example of assets and then when we say profit uh, this is the Income minus all the expenses. And the liability, so alam natin kung anong meaning ng liability. So this is the uh, obligation of the company or the organization, which is the uh, amount that we owed to the lenders and suppliers. So ito yung mga hinaram natin. Ano, for example, uh, bank debt, a mortgage debt, uh, and ano pa, uh, money owed to suppliers. And when we say inventory, this is the term of goods that available for sale and raw materials that used to produce uh, available goods for uh, the available for sales. Yeah. Okay, so next question. So... What is the remainder after all the expenses have been deducted from revenues? What is the remainder after all the expenses have been deducted from revenues? A. Gross income. B. Service income. C. Net income. D. Repair income. Okay, so the correct answer, so the correct answer is letter C, which is the net income. So net income, this is your take-home pay after the taxes and other payroll deduction. So gross income, this is the amount you earn before the taxes. So usually nakikita natin yan do sa ating mga pay slip, di ba? And then when uh, service income, uh, it is the uh, income earned by uh, providing technical consulting and other uh, professional services. So yung mga niri repair inside the company. So dito natin siya uh, pinapasok. And then uh, repair income is the uh, expenses of a business that incurs in to restore the previous operating condition or to keep an asset uh, in its current operating condition. So, baka malito kayo ha in service income and repair income. So, service income, ito yung income earned by providing technical or uh, consulting and other professional service. Repair income, usually ito yung ginagamit natin, uh, expenses to restore kung ano yung mga uh, defects dun sa mga uh, gamit inside the business. So, for... The next question, so to which financial reports are liabilities and capital added? To which financial reports and liabilities, to which financial reports are liabilities and capital added? A, income statement, B, statement of cash flow, C, statement of owner's capital, and letter D, balance sheet. Okay, 
Okay, so the correct answer is letter. Ng mga sagot? Okay, correct. So the correct answer is letter D, which is the balance sheet. So when we say balance sheet, it is a summary of company's assets, liabilities, and also the equity. And income statement, is uh, it pertains to the summary of business income and also the uh, expenses and profits. Statement of cash flow, uh, it is a the uh, company's cash flow activities, particularly in uh, operating, investing, and financing. And then when we say statement of owner's capital, this is the account in which the owner's investment is recorded plus the uh, net income earned by the company, so minus the draws made by the owner. All right, for our next question. Okay, so what do you call a portion of the hair structure uh, extending above the skin surface? What do you call a portion of the hair structure extending above the skin surface? A, follicle, B, hair shaft, C, strands, D, hair root. So, may nagsagot ng A, may nagsagot ng B, Okay, so the correct answer in question number 40 is letter B, which is the hair shop. So when we say hair shop, it is the part of the hair that can be seen above our scalp. And then when we say a hair follicles, it is the, uh, it is the follicle that anchors into the hair, uh, anchors to the hair into our skin. And then strands of course in tagalog yung ginatawag nating hibla and of course the hair root ito yung uh, matatagpuan to uh, beneath the skin surface okay so next question So next is, what do you call to a portion of the hair structure found beneath the skin surface? This is part of the hair enclosed within the follicle. So parang nabanggit ka din siya kanina, no? Uh, dun sa question before the number 41. Again, what do you call a portion of the hair structure found beneath the skin surface? So this part of the hair is enclosed within the follicle. A, hair root, B, strands, C, hair shaft, C, add letter D, sorry, follicle. Okay, so the correct answer in this question is number, uh, is letter a, which is the hair root. So it is found beneath on our skin surface. So it is a soft, thickened bulb of the base of our hair. So yung hair root natin. Di ba minsan pag meron tayong nabubunot na isang hibla, meron tayong parang nakikitang bulb uh, dun sa end ng ating hair. So that is the hair root. So next. Okay, so we are now in... a. Uh, Cosmetology. So, question number 42. A corrective makeup that makes small eyes appear bigger is A. Adding lines on the eyelids. B. Using dark colored eyeshadow. C. Using light colored eyeshadow. And letter D. Using mascara. A corrective makeup that makes small eyes appear bigger. Yan, para for those who are... Uh... Okay, so 
engage in uh, makeup or sa mga mahilig mag-makeup, alam na alam siguro natin yan. Especially to the girls. Okay, so what is the correct answer? So what will we do uh, if you have a small eyes and if you want to make up your it bigger? Okay, so someone is answered letter A and someone answered letter B. So the correct answer is letter A. Okay, so A adding lines on the eyelid. So for example, uh, pwede kayong maglagay ng uh, eyeliner, liquid eyeliner, pwedeng sa uh, above or uh, below your eyes. So for you to make your eyes appear bigger. So when we use the, the dark colored eyeshadow, uh, it will help you to make your eyes appear smaller. And when we use a light colored eyeshadow, of course, it will uh, give you a natural look or fresh look. And then when using mascara, we use the mascara. Uh, mascara, we use, we use this mascara uh, for uh, lifting and darkening our uh, eyelashes. Okay, so next. Okay, Ella has acne problem, so she went to cosmetologist for an advice. Though she is under medical care, what would be the role of the cosmetologist? A, work closely with the client's physician to carry out instruction as to the kind and frequency of uh, facial treatments. B, uh, advise the client to stop the medication from the physician. C, uh, she can have her own separate medication aside from the physician. D, refuse and do not give further service. Again, Ella has acne problem, so she went to a cosmetologist for an advice. Though she is under medical care, what would be the role of cosmetologist? Okay, so what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer is letter A, which is work closely with the client's position to carry out instruction as to kind and frequency of facial treatment. Okay, so why? No, bakit kailangan makipag uh, work closely ni cosmetologist dun sa position, client's position? Okay, so the cosmetology is concerned to the beauty treatment. So cosmetology provides care for the skin and also for the hair and nails. So to avoid the allergy and to avoid the medical uh, complication, so the cosmetologists need to uh, uh, need to coordinate or uh, closely contact to the client's physician. Kasi kung hindi, baka mas matrigger or hindi uh, mawala yung uh, acne problem na tinatawa. Okay? So, for the next questions. How is highlight produced for corrective makeup? A highlight is produced when A. A darker foundation than the original one is applied to a particular part of the face. B. A highlight shade than the a lighter shade than the original one is applied to a particular part of the face. C. A medium shade similar to the original one is applied to a particular part of the face. And letter D. A shadow subdues or minimize prominent features. Again, for the question 44, how is highlight produced for a corrective makeup? So a highlight can produce when? A, B, C, or D.
Okay, so the correct answer in number 44, so is letter B, which is the a highlight shade than original one, is applied to be particular part of the face. So, uh, especially to the girls, uh, we use a highlighter. So, but natin ginagamit yung ha, highlighter sa ating uh, mga face when we do our makeup. In our Zoom participants, meron ba ditong uh, mga nag apply ng makeup? Um, Ma'am Shara. Shara. Occasionally po. Occasionally. So, are you using a highlighter? Um, sometimes po. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Kapag may mga occasion lang, ano? Okay, so... Uh, thank you, Ms. Shara. So, highlighter, it can be applied to the face or other parts of our body. So, ang purpose nito is to brighten the skin area. So, for example, ginagamit natin yung mga uh, uh, highlighter dun sa uh, ibabaw at taas ng ating kilay para mas ma-highlight yung kilay natin. So, it also creates a perception of depth and Angle. So, ayan. So, again, kaya tayo gumagamit ng ating, uh, uh, we use highlighter uh, as a part of our makeup uh, to brighten the skin on the given area. Okay? So, for our next question, so if you have a larger full lips, how will you apply lipstick? A, shade color at side lips. Keep corner lips around. C, apply lipstick inside of lip line. D, apply the entire lips with light color of lipstick. Again, if you have a full lips, how will you apply lipstick? So in our FBLI viewers, they answered B, they answered D, they answered C. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer is letter Okay, letter C. So we have to apply lipstick inside the lip line because kapag inapply pa natin yung ating uh, lipstick outside our lip line, mas lalong uh, uh, kakapal or lalaking tingnan. Makikreate siya ng illusion na malaki, uh, lalong lalaki ang ating uh, lips. Then, uh, baliktad din naman, vice versa, kapag tayo naman ay manipis ang uh, lips, so we have to put the uh, lip liner. So, nakikreate siya ng illusion, di ba? And usually, pag uh, lip liner sa labas ng uh, labi natin, uh, nagdo-drawing tayo para makapag-create ng illusion na medyo makapal yung ating lips. Okay. So, next. So, Olivia... Bakes cheese bread, forming a fairly firm and prosperous structure. What gives structure to a cheese bread? A. Albumen. B. Gluten. C. Whey. D. Uh, casein. Mute po kayo, ma'am. 
hindi ka po naririnig. Mute po po. Mute po na. We can't hear you, ma'am. Ah, okay. Sorry, nakamute pala ako. Again, Olivia bakes cheese bread forming a fairly firm porous structure. What gives structure to cheese bread? A, albumen, B, gluten, C, whey, D, casein. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer in number 46 is letter B, which is the gluten. Okay, so gluten, it gives uh, it gives the dough the elasticity and also it helps to rise and keep it from, uh, it keeps the shape and uh, leaving uh, the final product a chewy texture. So yung albumen, we all know that it's, it is the part of the uh, white in the egg. And then whey, uh, we use whey in making dairy products. And casein, casein is found in milk and cheese. So it is used for water binding. So for the uh, chewy texture and to keep the shape, uh, you have to use the gluten. So the correct answer is letter, letter B. Okay, so next question. Food furnishes the body with the different nutrients it needs. Which of the following nutrients is needed as the main structural component of the body? A, carbohydrates, B, protein, C, fat, D, fiber. Again, the food furnishes the body with the different nutrients it needs. Which of the following nutrients is needed as the main structural component of the body? A, carbohydrates, B, protein, C, fat, D, fiber. Okay, so the correct answer is letter B, which is protein. Okay, so FB live viewers also uh, get the correct answer. Most of them answered letter B. Okay, so B protein, so it is the main constituent of the body. So also, uh, it helps us in making up the muscles, of course, our internal organs, skin, and blood. So carbohydrates, we all know that it is the main source of energy. And then fat, when we say fat, it is the stored energy for the long, uh, in the long term. So yung mga energy na hindi natin nababurn, it is stored as Fat. And then, of course, fiber. So it's also part of the uh, fruits and vegetables uh, that cannot be uh, digested. So fiber is uh, important in digestion. So sa ating uh, digestive tract. Okay, for our next question. The practice of adding baking soda when cooking vegetable for the purpose of retaining the green color and the crispiness should be avoided primarily because A. The flavor of the vegetable is modified. B. Vitamin C is destroyed in the presence of alkali. C. They become less uh, platable. D. They become hard to digest. Again, the practice of adding baking soda when cooking vegetable for the purpose of retaining the green color and the crispiness should be avoided primar primarily because it's A, B, C, or D.
Okay, so what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer is letter B, which is vitamin C is destroyed in the presence of alkali. So this is a uh, bad practice. Ano? So uh, it can also affect the uh, soft, softeni, softness of the vegetables and it can also alter the vegetables flavor. So it can destroy uh, the vitamins uh, such as the thiamine content and also uh, the loss of vitamin C. So instead, uh, to retain the color green, so you can use, uh, the, you can shorten the cooking period or the cooking time or uh, choose another cooking method uh, that preserve the color and also uh, uh, that, that retain the uh, vitamin. Like, uh, for example, uh, steaming, di ba? Hindi, hindi nababawasan yung uh, crispiness and uh, vitamins that present in a uh, vegetable. Okay, for our next question. So these are some of the guidelines in the conservation of nutrients in preparing fruits and vegetables, except A. Wash fruits and vegetables before peeling. B. Cut fruits and vegetables immediately before cooking. C. Pair fruits and vegetables immediately before cooking. And D. Allow frozen vegetables to thaw before cooking. Again, these are some of the guidelines in the conservation of nutrients in preparing fruits and vegetables except Wash fruits and vegetables before peeling. B. Cut fruits and vegetables immediately before cooking. C. Pair fruits and vegetables immediately uh, before cooking. And letter D. Allow frozen vegetables to thaw before cooking. Okay, so the question is uh, accept. Okay, so what is the correct answer? All right, so the correct answer in this question is letter D. So this is the uh, allow the frozen vegetable to thaw before cooking. So a frozen vegetable should not be defrosted because they can lose uh, their crunchy texture and also uh, defrosting frozen vegetable can cause them to lose the flavor and also the nutrients, uh, especially if you defrost them uh, a day or, or two prior to cooking. So uh, the correct answer is letter D. Okay, next question. When apples or potatoes are filled and sliced, it will turn brown if not used immediately. To prevent this, you need to A. Soak in calamansi, lemon, or water in vinegar. B. Put this in hot water, uh, then in cold water. C. Wash again after peeling. And letter D. Soak in oil. Again, when apples or potatoes are peeled and sliced, it will turn brown if not used immediately. So to prevent this, you need to A, B, C, or D. Okay, so the correct answer is uh, letter A. Okay, so soak it in calamansi, lemon, or water with uh, vinegar. So why? So uh, potatoes and uh, apple 
uh, it contains citric acid. So uh, it slows the chemical reaction uh, in uh, preventing from browning. So once the fruit was cut or uh, sliced, so uh, the cell would be open and the enzyme has the uh, access to oxygen. So kaya siya nagta-turn ng brown. So uh, to help us uh, to eliminate and uh, avoid the turning brown of the sliced apples and potato, it, uh, you need to soak it in calamansi or whether in lemon or uh, water with vinegar. Okay, for our uh, next question. The smallest division of the metric scale that you can find in the steel rule is A, decimeter, B, centimeter, C, milliliter, D, meter. Again, it is the uh, smallest division of metric scale that you can find in the steel rule. A, decimeter, B, centimeter, C, milliliter, and D, meter. So what is the answer? What is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer is letter C, which is the milliliter. So milliliter, we use it uh, to measure something that is very small. Okay, this is the smallest division in metric scale. So decimeter, uh, this is uh, a larger than milliliter. And uh, centimeter is uh, next to the smallest unit. And meter is uh, more than, it's more than three feet. So again, the smallest division is the milliliter. So ang uh, sunod-sunod niya is the uh, milliliter, uh, centimeter, meter, and kilometer. Okay, for the next question, fastening materials are important in woodworks. The most common of these materials is A, towel, B, bolts, C, screw, D, nails. Again, fastening materials are important in woodworks. And the most common of these materials is A, towel, B, bolts, C, screw, D, nails. Okay, so the correct answer is letter D, which is the nail. So nails is the uh, most common use to fasten the pieces of woodwork. Okay, so that is the example of nails, uh, dowel, screw, and also bolts. So that is the uh, difference of uh, the four, four uh, choices in the question. So dowel is a pin that used to fitting into a hole. And then a bolt. So this type of fastener is usually made by metal that is uh, commonly comprises with a head. And then a screw. So uh, we use it to assemble the objects with threads. Next. Okay, so a wood product made of three or more veneer slices that are laid one upon the other and uh, banded with glue or syn synthetic resin is Again, a wood product made of three or more veneer slices that are laid one upon the other and banded with glue or synthetic resin is. 
A. Pressed wood. B. Plywood. C. Particle board. D. Soft wood. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so for the correct answer, it's letter B, which is plywood. So plywood is made of the thin sheets or uh, of cross laminated veneer and glued together under heat and pressure, while pressed wood it is made of uh, made from wood veneers, wood shavings, uh, and particles. So uh, it sawdust or uh, wood fibers banded together with an ad adhesive under heat and pressure. So particle wood, uh, it is also known as chipboard, and it is manufactured from the wood chips and a synthetic resin or other suitable binder. And then when we say soft wood, it refers to the lumber that has been cut from evergreen and coffee near trees. For our next question, so which of the following tools is used in checking the squareness of the corners and flatness of the surface? A, stretch straight edge. B, steel square. C, sliding T-bevel. D, Try square. Again, which of the following tools is used in checking the squareness of the corners and flatness of the surface? A. Stretch e straight edge. B. Steel square. C. Sliding T bevel. And D. Try square. Okay, what is the correct answer? Okay, so from our room, someone answered letter D and letter B. From our FB Live, letter B, letter C, and letter D. Okay, so the correct answer is letter B, which is the steel square. Steel square uh, or carpenter square, also known as carpenter square, uh, used to lay out the square or the right angle. And then uh, straight edge, this is a tool that used for drawing straight lines or checking the straightness. And uh, sliding T-bevel, we use it for setting and transferring the angles. While the tri-square, uh, it used in making and checking the 90 degree angles on the pieces of the wood. So in uh, uh, if you want to uh, measure the uh, squareness or the right angle, you have to use steel square. Next, uh, a lumber that has been sawed edge and trim in which cutting marks are visible is a wrap b smooth c dress d work a lumber that has been sawed edge and trim in which cutting marks are visible is a rough b smooth c dress d work So what is the correct answer? Letter, it's letter what? It's letter A or B? How about the other, other uh, answer? A?
Okay, so the correct answer is letter A, which is the wrap or uh, also known as unfinished board. Okay, wrap or unfinished board, it has been made, it has been dried, but not plain. Uh, and then smooth, uh, it is finished lumber uh, through drying and planing. And then the dress is also called surface lumber. It has been jointed and planed after it has been dried. And then uh, work, it is a lumber that has been matched or lapped or patterned or molded. Next. All right. Uh, which lumber has been put through planing machine which give pine surface? A rough, B smooth, B dress, B work. Again, which lumber has been put through planing machine which gives pine surface? A rough, B smooth, C dress, D work. What is the correct answer? It's letter A or letter C. Okay, so I already um, mentioned it a while ago. So the correct answer is letter C, which is dressed. So uh, it is also called surface lumber. Again, it has been jointed and planed after it has been dried. So that's why the correct answer is letter C, dressed or surface lumber. And in number 57, which is a plank of wood that has been roughly cut? Which is a plank of wood that has been roughly cut? A, timber, B, board, C, lumber, D, block. So what is the correct answer? Okay, so the correct answer is letter. Okay, the correct answer is letter C, which is lumber. So lumber is the untreated and cut into planks. So uh, the other choices are timber. So it is considered uh, by large and uh, less of a processed wood product. It can also refer to uh, intact trees which have not been cut. And then lumber, it is usually uh, the wood that has been cut into standard size. And then board, it is a long flat slab or uh, what we call uh, saw, sawed lumber. Okay, next question. So in number 58, which of the following is not a requirement to consider in proportioning concrete mixture? A, economy, B, workability, C, strength, D, flexibility. Again, which of the following is not a requirement to consider in proportioning concrete mixture? A, economy, B, workability, 
C. Strength. D. Flexibility. So, it's letter A or letter D? Which one is the correct answer? So, again, the question is, which of the following is not a requirement to consider in proportioning concrete mixture? A, economy, B, workability, C, strength, D, flexibility. So the correct answer is the letter D, which is flexibility. So workability, this is the term uh, describing how easily uh, freshly mixed concrete can be mixed and placed or uh, consolidated and finished. Strength and durability, it is uh, important and needed. And when we say economy, it should be uh, optimized for availability and, of course, for sustainability. That's why the answer is letter D, flexibility. Again, the question is, which of the following is not a requirement to considering in proportioning concrete mixture? So you have to uh, better analyze the question. Okay, next, number 59. So what ingredient in concrete is added to the batch immediately before or during its mixing to improve its durability and accelerate strength and de strength development? A, fine aggregates. B, coarse aggregates. C, add mixtures. D, water. So what ingredient in concrete is added to the batch immediately before or during its mixing to improve its durability and accelerate strength development? A, fine aggregates. B, coarse aggregates. C, add mixture. D, water. So what is the correct answer? It's letter D or letter C. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C, which is add mixture. Add mixture, it is a formulated chemical compound that are used to modify certain properties of concrete. And then when we say fine aggregates, uh, it is usually the sand or the crushed stone. And then coarse aggregates, it pertains to the gravel and also crushed stone. And then water, it acts as a lubricant for the aggregates. Uh, and the only ingredients that react chemically to the cement. Okay, for our uh, number 60 question. Which of the following refers to the structural, structural reinforcing member that holds or binds together the main reinforcement of a column? 
which of the following refers to the structural reinforcing member that holds or bind together the main reinforcement of a column? A. Lateral tie. B. Stirrups. C. Spiral tie. D. Rebars or rebars. So someone answered letter B, other answered letter D, and there's on there's also letter C. So which is which? Which is the correct answer? Okay, so in number 60, the correct answer is letter B, which is this tear ups. So this is, uh, so we uh, usually it is made uh, out of a rectangle steel pieces. So it is a uh, wrap around the top and the bottom of the bar uh, of the beans. So I have a picture here. So you can easily understand. So it is used to hold uh, in a place that primary, primarily reinforcement bar. Okay, so that is the example of a steer up. So different kind of steer ups. So uh, these are the uh, closed loop tie uh, at regular intervals that holds the bar in the position. So we use it in beams and in columns. Okay, so when we say uh, reinforcement, ito yung nagpapa, nagdadagdag ng tibay or nagpapatibay. So in layman's term, it, they also uh, use it or they also call it rings, yung stir up. Okay, so for the next question, Okay, so the structure that holds the poured concrete until it hardens to form the concrete beam or post. A, scap folding. B, butter board. C, forms. D, stake. Again, it is the structure that holds the poured concrete until it hardens to form the concrete beam or post. A, scap folding. B, butter board. C, forms. D stake. So our FLI viewer answered A, B, C. How about to our Zoom participants? Parang dalawa, tatlo na lang ang nakita kong sumasagot. <laughs> Okay, the structure that holds the poured concrete until it hardens to form a concrete beam or post, 
A. Scaffolding. B. Butterboard. C. Forms. D. Stay. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C. Forms. So forms or what we call a framework, it is a temporarily or a permanent molds which is a which concrete or a similar materials are poured. So generally, uh, we usually remove once the concrete uh, has again sufficient strength. Then, uh, yung butter boards naman na tinatawag natin. So, uh, it is also a temporary frames uh, that set beyond the corners of a plain foundation and precise elevation. And then when we say stake or uh, construction staking, it is also known as the site layout survey. Itawag natin na stake. So now uh, I have a picture here. So I want you to uh, take a look at it. So this is the example of a uh, form. Ayan. So ito yung uh, temporarily... Uh, na nilalagay na temporarily frame na nilalagay natin uh, hanggang sa hindi pa nag-gain ng uh, strength yung uh, concrete na inilagay natin dyan. And then some of you also answered scaffolding. So when you say scaffolding, it is referred to the scaff scaffold or staging. So usually it is a temporary structure that usually used during the construction of a building. So it, it provides safe uh, spaces for the workers to move around and to carry out their tasks when, they, uh, when it comes to the uh, elevated area and elevated part of the building. So iba yung scaffolding, yan yung scaffolding, yan. Yung ginagamit nila uh, to move around. And then forms, ito yung tinatawag natin form, yung nilalagay natin sa uh, concrete pag binubuhusan natin ng simento. So tinatanggal natin yan kapag meron ng enough uh, strength yung, or tuyo na yung uh, binuhusan natin poste. Okay, for our next uh, question. So, concrete is said to be workable if it can be molded or deformed without segregation. The characteristic in, is known as A, consistency, B, plasticity, C, mobility, or D, workability. Again, it is a, uh, a concrete is said to be workable if it can be molded or deformed without segregation. This characteristic is known as A, consistency, B, plasticity, C, mobility, or D, workability. Okay, so the correct answer is letter B, which is uh, plasticity. So when we say plasticity, uh, plasticity of concrete uh, is it uh, the gaining of any shape and size. So when the concrete is in the wet state, it is a plastic state. So kapag basa pa, yung tinatawag natin, kapag basa pa yung semento, ang tawag natin doon ay plastic state or yun nga ang tinatawag natin, plasticity. So workability means uh, it is a property that directly impacts the strength, the quality, the appearance, and even the cost of labor for placement and finishing operation. And then for mobility, it is the capacity for the concrete mixture to respond to vibration readily and to fill uh, all the parts and the corners of a form 
which is defined as mobility. So when we say consistency, it includes the entire range of fluidity from the driest uh, to the wettest possible mixture. Okay. Okay, so for the number uh, 63, for the question 63. Okay, so which bulb in water service opens to admit air if the pressure within the water service falls below atmospheric pressure? A, anti-vacuum. B, gate. C, vacuum. D, uh, calorifer. Again, which bulb in a water service opens to admit uh, air if the pressure within the water service falls below atmospheric pressure? A, anti-vacuum. B, gate. Uh, C, vacuum. D, calorifer. So from our FB Live, most of the answer is letter A. While uh, from our Zoom participants, most of the answer is letter B. So which is the correct answer? It's A or it's letter B? Okay, so the correct answer is letter B, which is gate. So gate, it is a uh, bulb that has uh, to turn a multiple times to go from open and closed position. So it is uh, to slow the operation and also to prevent water from harmer effects. So they are designed to be fully open, so allowing it uh, from full flow or also in fully close. Uh, Inaallow siya to fully open para dare-derecho yung pagpo-flow and inaallow naman siya to fully close para ma-prevent natin yung pag-stop ng uh, flow entirely. Okay? Okay, so... I think we are now in the part of, or in the area of uh, plumbing. Okay, so since we have a uh, almost 20 minutes left, so I will discuss, uh, I will uh, review uh, the first part so that uh, hindi ninyo nakakalimutan kasi masyadong mahaba yung interval nung uh, review natin. Since uh, we start last March, so March, April, May, June, so I will uh, discuss again some some of the uh, previous question. So on our next meeting, so probably we can pro we can directly proceed to plumbing. Okay. So for a while. Okay, so I think uh, we can discuss uh, 10 or uh, 15 questions for our uh, remaining minutes. Okay, so for those uh, who tuned us in FB Live, so again, this is your chance to uh, uh, review our uh, last topic. Okay, so for the question number one, which is the art of building, which is the art of building with stone, bricks, concrete, blocks, and other similar materials? A, carpentry, B, concrete, C, mortar, B, masonry. Okay. 
Okay, so the correct answer in question number one is letter D, which is masonry. This is the uh, art of building with stone, uh, bricks, and also concrete blocks. Again, uh, the person who construct masonry is called the mason or the brick layer. I, for the next question, what do you call the process of hardening of concrete? A, curing, B, setting, C, hardening, D, molding. Again, what do you call the process of hardening the concrete? A, curing, B, setting, C, hardening, or D, molding. Okay, so the correct answer is curing. So it is the process of maintaining adequate moisture in the concrete with the proper temperature. Next, for the question number three, which is not a wrapping up tool? Which is not a wrapping up tool? A, crane doll. B, cold chisel. C, patent hammer. D, claw hammer. Yeah, so you have to uh, also familiarize yourself to the uh, different uh, equipment and materials, especially in carpentry and masonry. So again, which of the following, uh, which is not a wrapping up tool? A, crane doll, B, cold chisel, C, patent hammer, D, claw hammer. Okay, so the correct answer is letter D claw hammer so this is the tool uh, this is the tool for driving or pulling the nails okay so wrapping up tools this is usually the necessary process of preparing those are the materials that we need to prepare uh, arranging forming laying and of course shaping okay so like what I've said, this is a part of your review. So the last uh, remaining minutes. So masonry tools is classified into two categories. The first one is the wrapping up tools. And the second one is the uh, surface finishing tools. Okay, so that is the example of wrapping up tools. So crane doll, patent hammer, and cold chaser. So ito yung mga ginagamit natin in the process of preparing arranging, forming, laying, and also for shaping. So surface, surface finishing tools from the word finishing, finishing tools. So ito yung mga ginagamit natin. We have the floats and the trowels. Okay, so for the next question, which of the following are known as a coarse aggregates in concrete mixture? A, sand, B, soil, C, gra gravel, D, stone. So, uh, kanina na-discuss din natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng coarse aggregates, fine aggregates, admixtures, and water. Okay, so which of the following are known as coarse aggregates in concrete mixture? A. Sand, B. Soil, C. Gravel, D. Stone. Okay, so some answer letter A, some uh, answered letter C. So the correct answer is letter C, which is the gravel. So it is a mix of rock, uh, rock pieces and uh, small rock. Okay, next. What material reinforces the structure of masonry materials? A. Mortar, B. Cement, C. Steel, D. HCB, A, CHB. Again, what material reinforces the structure of masonry materials? A. Mortar, B. Cement, C. Steel, D. CHB.
Okay, so ayan, ang daming sagot ano, para yung iba nakalimutan na nila yung correct answer. Okay, someone answered letter A, also letter D, and letter B and letter C. So all of the choices. So the correct answer is letter C which is steel or also known as rebar. So short rebar is the uh short for reinforcing bar. So uh steel or rebar that is, that is uh, offers uh, strength to the structures. Next. So the preparation of good quality lumber includes several stages. When it is dry, the process involved is A, seasoning, B, staining, C, lumbering, D, lagging. Okay, the preparation of a good quality lumber includes several stages. So when it is dry, the process involved is? Okay, so the correct answer is letter A. Okay, A for seasoning. So it is the process by which the moisture content in the timber is produced to required level. So by producing the moisture content, the strength and elasticity and the durability and the properties are developed. So yung pagpapatuyo dun sa uh, pagpapatuyo ng kahoy or wood na tinatawag natin, ang tawag dun sa process na yon ay seasoning. So isipin nyo na lang seasoning kasi kailangan niya ng uh, matagal na preparation para matuyo. So uh, dun sa process na yon uh, dun niya nagigain yung strength, elasticity, and durability. So mahaba ang proseso kasi yun eh. Mahabang, uh, pag nagpapatuyo tayo ng wood, hindi naman siya uh, ilang araw lang. So sometimes it takes a weeks and also a month para makapag-produce tayo ng quality wood and lumber. Next. Okay. A seasoned lumber is ideal for carpentry works. Which among of the following is best to use? A. Sand dried. B. Nail dried. C. Air dried. D. Natural dried. Again, a seasoned lumber is ideal for carpentry works. Which among of the following is best to use? A. Sand dried. B. Uh, kiln dried. C. Air dried. And D. Natural dried. So most of the uh, answered is letter A. Okay, so the correct answer in number seven is letter B. It is uh, kiln dried. So that is uh, the wood that had been dried into oven. So kiln, ito yung uh, kiln from the word kiln, that means uh Oven. So with kiln, you can control the environment such as the temperature, humidity, and steam level para uh, dun sa process uh, to set a period of time. Okay, so uh, always remember we have uh, two methods in drying the lumber. So we have the uh, natural drying and also the artificial drying. Okay, so we almost have seven minutes. Remaining seven minutes. Okay, so... For the next question, there are numerous kinds of saw. So the one used by sawing along the grain of wood is called A. Rip saw, B. Cupping saw, C. Chris cut saw, B. D. Back saw. Again, there are numerous kinds of saw. The one used by sawing along the grain of the wood is called A. Rip saw, B. Cupping saw, C. Cross cut saw, and D. Back saw.
Okay, so very good. You got, oh, you almost got the correct answer. So it's letter A. So again, sabi ko nga, we have a different kind of so. So some of you uh, nalilito kung ano ba yung pinagkakaiba-iba ng mga so natin. So when uh, we say cupping so, so it is used to cut external shape and uh, interior cuts. Ayan. Ito yung example picture of cupping saw. And then rip saw, it is designed uh, to cut along the parallel grain. And then cross cut saw, designed uh, for cutting the uh, wood across. Ayan. So minsan, uh, uh, marami nagkakamali at nalilito sa rip saw and uh, cross, cross cut saw. So ang difference lang ng dalawa is na andito sa teeth or dun sa ngipin. Yung pinakang so. Ayan. Okay. So, eto yung pinagkaiba ng rip so sa cross cut so. So, naandito sa teeth yung difference ng dalawa. So, the cross cut is designed for cutting across the grain. So, remember that across from the word cross cut. And then the rip saw, it is, uh, uh, it do not have an uh, angled edge. Alright. So, next. So, we almost have five minutes left. Okay. So, the strongest form of wood joint applicable for table legs is A meter, B mortise and tenon. C, uh, dado or dado. D, Bat and lock. Okay, so the correct answer, uh, the strongest form of wood joint that applicable for table legs is mortise and tenon. So letter B. So again, this is the picture of uh, different kinds of uh, wood joint. So when we say about the table legs, uh, the applicable one is the mortise and uh, tenon, this one. And then for the next question, there is a considerable number of wood joints. The simplest and the easiest to make is A, lap joint, C, dado joint, C, meter joint, D, bat joint. Okay, the simplest and easiest to make. So what is the correct answer? The simplest and easiest to make, the wood joint. Okay, so the correct answer is letter A, which is the lap joint. Okay, so it can be used to join, lap joint uh, can be used to join the wood together. So it can be secured by glue, nails, glue and nails or other methods. So that, that's why it is the simplest and easiest. Okay, so that is the example of uh, types of welded joints okay so next who are the people responsible and assigned to check if you are if your plumbing connections are appropriate a building inspector b engineer c foreman and d plumber Okay, so what is the correct answer? Who are the people responsible and assigned to check if your plumbing connection are appropriate? A, building inspector. D, engineer. C, foreman. D, plumber. Okay. 
Okay, so the correct answer is letter A. It is a building inspector. So building inspector is the one uh, responsible to check and see the certain standard and safety. So engineer, it deals to the designing and planning. Plumber is the person who install and repair the pipes and fittings of water supply. While foreman is responsible for organizing uh, the overall construction okay i think for our uh, last question because it's already 7 59 okay for our last question in plumbing work what kind of tool is used to tighten or to loosen the bolts and screw head a basin wrench b pipe wrench c pliers and d adjustable wrench Okay, so the correct answer in number 12, in plumbing work, what kind of tool is used to tighten and to loosen the bolts and screw head? Okay, so the correct answer is letter D, letter D, adjustable wrench. So that is the uh, picture example of adjustable wrench. Okay, so ang ina-adjust ang ina natin dito sa uh, wrench is yung... Uh, to loose and to tighten the bolt and screw. Okay, so uh, it's already 8 o'clock. So I think that's all for uh, today. For a while. Okay, so I hope everybody, uh, all of you learn and gain uh, knowledge today and uh, I hope that every one of you and can join again on our next meeting. May natutunan po ba tayo for our today's discussion? Okay, so I would like to thank everyone, especially uh, our viewers, FB Live viewers, and of course, our uh, student and participant uh, who registered in our uh, Zoom room meeting. So I hope uh, everybody of you uh, can join again on our next meeting. So uh, probably matapos natin yung ating almost 150 questions. So for those, uh, for those uh, who interested in... Uh, enrollment for the uh, TLE major, you can uh, contact directly or message uh, the page of Teacher A. So aside from TL, TLE major, uh, they offered a different uh, major like English, uh, professional education, general education. So uh, for the information, just uh, message directly to the page of Teacher A. So again, uh, it's been uh, almost two hours, so I hope uh, all of you are fine and you can now rest. Uh, again, thank you so much everyone for listening and hopefully next meeting, makita kita ko ulit tayo para madagdagan ng ating knowledge para sa preparation ninyo sa inyong uh, upcoming LET examination. Good luck everyone and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Good night. You may now rest. Bye, Mom. <laughs>